Hello, my name is John Gibbons, and I am with the product success team here at ServiceNow. And today I'd like to talk about uh, vulnerability response CI matching and some of the best, uh, best recommended best practices for doing that. Okay, so uh, here we have a safe harbor, harbor notice for any forward looking statements. We're not gonna talk about it, uh, anything that's already not publicly available, so we should be fine. Uh, some of the topics I'd like to cover today um, regarding CI, CI matching and the best practices are just an overview of how CI matching works, uh, CI matching rules, uh, CI matching properties, uh, host maps, and uh, how to tune your CI matching. Okay, so the first thing here is we have an overview of how matching works. Uh, so for example, we're using Tenable in this case. Uh, when we get the asset for the, the payload uh, for that particular asset from the scanner, right? First thing we're going to do is we're going to look in the discovered item table to see if we can find a match using the source ID, right? Great. If we found a match, um, you know, it's going to look for any any field uh, payload updates, right? If there are updates, then we're going to uh, set a reapply flag uh, on that discovered item so that you could potentially run uh, CI lookup rules against that again to make sure that the changes don't cause it to match to a different CI. Um, if we don't find a match using that source ID, then we're going to go into the CI lookup rules. Right? Uh, once we get into those CI lookup rules, you know, if, if we found a match and it's not a part of any kind of ignore class or, or retired or decommissioned CI, uh, and we'll get to this here a little bit later, um, right, then we're going to return that CI. Um, if we didn't find a match, right, and then we're going to uh, essentially go into the IRE to see if the IRE can make a match. Uh, if the IRE can't make a match, um, then what's going to happen is it's going to construct a payload depending on the data that's contained in that asset. If all we have is an IP address, then it's going to construct a payload for an incomplete IP. Um, class of, of CI, uh, if it does, if it has a network, a NetBIOS name or an FQDN or something like that, something other than IP, uh, then it's going to construct a payload for an unclassed hardware record. Uh, depending on what type it is, right, we then submit it to the IRE. The IRE will then go ahead and create the appropriate class and return that new uh, CI record as the match. Uh, so moving on here, we've got uh, CI lookup rules. There's a couple of different types of CI lookup rules. Uh, the first one is a uh, field matching type of, of uh, CI lookup rule. Uh, and this is used when you don't need any kind of normalization or any special processing uh, that needs to be done. You can just use the straight value that comes in that payload and use that to try to find a match. So for this example here, you can see we're going to be using the FQDN from the payload. Uh, and from that, right, we're going to look into, in this case, right, just the CMDB CI table. You can change this to, to other tables if you want specific queries done to specific classes. But we're going to be using the fully qualified domain name field. Uh, right, you can, obviously, you can create new rules with new tables and new fields as long as that payload, uh, that field exists in the payload. Okay. Uh, the next type of uh, rule we have is a script-based uh, type of rule, and this is used when you need to have potentially some normalization of the data or, or any kind of special processing or lookups into other tables, uh, right? It gives, you the fun it gives you the ability to provide advanced logic to, to go ahead and try to find a match. Uh, so this is typically the type of rule that's used the most, um, but right, depending on your data and depending on how you want to look things up, uh, you could use either or. Um, I think the only caveat to this is if you're going to build any kind of logic in here, you want to make sure that your, your queries are e efficient as possible uh, so that you're not creating any kind of performance degradation when you're doing an ingestion. Okay, the next thing uh, we'll discuss is uh, some important system properties that are used with CI matching. Uh, the first one is the ignore CI class. Uh, and what this is used uh, as the example here, right? You can see we've got DNS name or cluster node. Uh, we don't want to we don't want to have a match against a DS name or a cluster node. We want to have a match against a server or something that can be remediated against. So we need to exclude these classes from being used uh, as matching as as a match, right? So 
uh, this class here uh, out of the box it's blank but if you have certain classes that you don't want to match on for right you've got dns name here and you've got cluster node here right and some other examples um, it will exclude it from any kind of matching so it helps hopefully to make your, your data a lot cleaner the next property here is the auto promote um, so auto promote is used so for example it's it's used to return the the, the proper ci so in this case we're taking a look at a network adapter uh, right, we don't want to we don't want to have um, a vulnerable item or discovered item against a network adapter. We want to have it against the associated server. Uh, and so what we can do is we can tell it to walk up to the parent record. Uh, so you can see here, right? Um, we we've got the the VMware NIC, right? And we want to use the C the right the the CI record instead. Now out of the box, it's going to use these values here. Uh, right, but if you want to add some more, in, in this case, right, VMware, uh, NIC, uh, you can go ahead and add additional classes. Uh, the next important thing here is a host import map. Um, host import maps, what they do is they define the field mappings uh, for data that comes from the payload uh, to the, the ultimate CI record that's going to be created, uh, right? So you can see that IP from the payload is going to go to the IP address field. Right, host name will go to the name field, and so on and so forth. The other, the other good thing about host import maps is it's going to give you the ability to use uh, logic to go ahead and normalize any data. Um, so uh, a useful scenario is when you need to sanitize a name when creating a new CI. Um, for example, if, uh, if if the FQDN value is used to create a, a CI. Um, so that the name is an FQDN, uh, what will happen is if you use ServiceNow Discovery when it comes in behind, uh, it's not able to reclassify that unclassed hardware record because it's going to be looking for a NetBIOS name, not an FQDN. Uh, so what we can do is we can use this host import map to, to strip out the, the domain part of that name and to only have that NetBIOS name so that Discovery can reclassify as it needs to. Uh, so the next thing here is some some CI matching tuning. Um, you know, first we need to understand where we're at when you're looking at your data. So a good way to do that is to to visualize is to use a report capability from a list view, right? So if you go into discovered items and you group it, or if you report by the state, right? In this case, we did a pie chart, uh, right? We we can quickly see where we're at, right? So we've got a 52% match right here. Right, 44% is is unmatched, and then we've got uh, some records that are being reclassified um, by IRE. Uh, in general, uh, you should probably try to aim for at least 75 to 85% match rate if your data will allow you to do that. Sometimes your seem to be is is just not there yet, um, but this will give you a, a good idea of this is close to what the the customer or what you're trying to expect. Uh, some other pieces here, uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot uh, CI matching, right, there's there's some important data pieces here. You can see uh, CI matching rule, uh, initial source data, and source data. Uh, using these attributes, right, we can tell um, kind of how, how things are working, right? So the first one is the CI matching rule. Is this the right, is this the right CI matching rule that you would expect this uh, CI to match against? Right. Um, if, right. If we saw an IP one here, um, and that's not what you're expecting, right? You may need to you may need to change how your CI lookup rules are, are working. Uh, also, right. So that that reporting feature gives you the ability to kind of see what the spread is of how your CI matching rules is doing, right? So you can see, right, FQDN and NetBIOS. Uh, I would expect these to have a higher match rate than IP address, right? And so we may need to take a look at the IP address rule and 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 see if there's something we need to do with that. First thing I would look at is the order, right? So you can see here uh, that the order of IP address is first, right? It probably should be last. Um, you probably should be targeting FQDN, right? The, the, these before IP address. Uh, in general, right, you should always have um, more granular rules evaluated first, right, and then more broad rules 
uh, further down the row, right? Uh, so the next thing here, um, you can also adjust the filter conditions here, right? If, if you need to make something more granular, more targeted um, when, when looking for your CIs. Also, right, when using a script-based uh, CI matching rule, when you need to use more complex, complex logic to determine a CI match, um, right, if you need to target specific tables or attributes used within the query, right? So you can see here, we're only looking in VMware instance, uh, right? And we're, uh, in this case, um, you know, they're, they're looking for uh, things that are not in this ignore property. Uh, the next data point that's helpful when using the discovered items the source data is the source data field. Uh, the source data contains the asset data from the scanner from the last import. So to view that, you're, sometimes you can look at it on the on the list view. Uh, oftentimes it's, it's easier to look at it um, in an XML view. So if you open up the record, you can open up uh, an XML view of it. But you can see here we have initial source data uh, and we have source data, right? So um, a good use case is if you have a discovered item that has an incorrect match and the name of the asset is completely different than what is contained in the source data, right? You should compare the two fields, initial source data and source data, uh, and look for any changes within the asset data, uh, right? That may point that you need to rerun this through your CI lookup rules because the asset name has changed. Uh, the next thing, right, how can you tell if you need to adjust a system property, auto-promote? Uh, so look at the discovered items, right? You group it by class and look for classes that you would not expect to be a match. And instead of it should have matched to a related CI. For example, um, we can see here we, we've got some network adapters, right? Um, we've got a router interface. We've got a disk here, um, right? That's kind of pointing to why did these match to this and not the associated server. So you may need to go to look at the pro that property that we discussed earlier uh, and add those particular classes to um, that property. Uh, again, right, same thing with the, uh, the ignore class, right? You can see here, um, we've got DNS name here, right? Th these discovered items matched against the DNS name, but there's a Windows server out there that has the same name. So we need to exclude DNS name from being a match. So again, right, you'd go out to this, this property here for that class. Uh, next, uh, host maps, right? So a good example of host maps here, as you can see, uh, this discovered item was created with a fully qualified domain name. Uh, once you use that host import map, right, and that script capability within there, uh, you will see going forward that those CIs will be created without a fully qualified domain name. And then IRE can come in and do its do its reclassification. Uh, the next thing is, is how do we manage incomplete IP uh, identified devices? Uh, you can look at this in three ways. The first is CIs that should have matched. Uh, you will need to validate the CI lookup rules or are evaluating uh, the correct attributes from the source data and, and if any special processing is needed to find a match, right? maybe using an IP range or an OS attributes and the CI matching rule to help these match. The next use case is we can make it match. Um, again, right, got to go into your CI lookup rules, make sure you're using the right attributes from the source data and if any special processing is needed. Uh, the next one is uh, incomplete IP devices that will never match. Um, from these, right, they're usually, I mean, all I, I incomplete IP identified devices are from, usually from an unauthenticated scan. Um, and so you can, you can either try to block those from even being ingested because there's nothing that we can do, uh, right? They, the customer's going to have to work with their, with their, um, their scanner SME, right? And they're going to have to figure out, do we block these from even being ingested? Maybe putting them in a different asset group or having different uh, host tags. Uh, but there's nothing there's nothing we can match on 
uh, to make these match. So this is just data that's that's not really useful because the when the remediation analyst gets the vulnerable item, all they're going to have is just an IP address. Uh, another feature um, that's that's used to help uh, increase your matching rate, right, is to re re reclassify the the discovered items, right. And so this is a manual effort, uh, and this would only be on uh, discovered items where the CI has a class of unmatched CI. Uh, the next one here is um, is to reapply the CI lookup rules. So if you go into your discovered items, you can pick, uh, select ones, uh, uh, write a list of, of discovered items that you want to rerun through your CI lookup rules. Uh, you can do that as well. This is usually used for testing uh, the changes that you've made to a CI lookup rule right before you run them in mass. Uh, and that would be using this method here, right? And if you go to the CI lookup rules and you've made changes to your CI lookup rules, right you can apply the changes and that will run all of your discovered items back through the ci lookup rules um, so it's it's right you can you can do it this way or if you make changes and you will just want to test it on a few of them then you should use this method first okay so in summary uh, we went through a lot of things today but we talked about ci matching overview uh, ci matching rules CI matching properties, host maps, and tuning of uh, your CI matching process. I uh, provided some more information here for you, a lot of good links. So there's a lot of good information out there on, on how to tune these things and, and how to work with this data. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. And I appreciate your time and, and thank you for joining today.